Hola, my name is Sonia Manzano, and on behalf of Storytime Village, I am going to read this book to you, No Dogs Allowed, that I actually wrote. I did. Here's the title page. See, it says No Dogs Allowed, story by Sonia Manzano, illustrated by John J. Muth. And the illustrator is the guy who makes all the pictures. It could be a girl, too. So, let's go. It starts like this. Hi, my name is Iris. I'm seven. And once a long while ago, when I was six, I lived in a place called the Bronx, in the kingdom of Third Avenue, in the land of New York City, with a big sister named Shorty the fortune teller who could tell the future by rolling her eyes. Now, this is based on my real sister, Audia, who was always like this. Oh, that was her. So, that's Shorty. A mother named Mommy the Busy because she was always busy doing something. A father named Bobby the Clever who with the touch of a hand and about five or six hours could fix anything. And a dog named Alexi Gente because he didn't do a thing. So here's the girl Iris, my sister who always went, oh, my mother and my father. One day, we decided to go to the lake in the Enchanted State Park. We woke up very early because that's how you beat traffic and get a good picnic table. It was so early, it was still dark outside. It was so early, I had extra trouble waking El Exigente because he's very good at sleeping. Now, this is true. We used to get up like at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to the lake or the beach when I was a kid. See, and I lived right outside the 3rd Avenue elevator train. So that's a train going by, and see the clock says it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why we did that. My mommy the busy and my papi the clever got everything ready. Mommy made a little lunch and a little after lunch snack. Then she made a little dinner and a little after dinner snack. Then she made dessert and a little something for the road in case we got hungry. My poppy packed saying, only take what you know you'll really need to go on a picnic. My big sister Shorty the fortune teller packed a few essentials. Remember her, Miss Rolling Eyes? Yeah. And I was packing for Alexi Gente when my sister yelled, rolling her eyes, Mom, Iris can't bring that dog, can she? There'll be nothing but trouble if he comes. There'll be nothing but trouble if he stays, said Mommy. Now, I'll just show you the picture quickly. See all the food that we're packing? We used to take, like, a whole ham, rice and beans, uh, coffee to grind and heat up the milk. It was like we were moving to the beach, actually. So there, they're packing all of this stuff, a lot of food, and shorty is angry that Iris wants to take the dog. We lugged our things to the sidewalk and met my cousin Carmen the Beautiful. She brought her traveling beauty parlor. My other cousin, Martha the Smart, she brought a few books. My Aunt Tuta, the happily married, and her brand new husband, Juan, they were so in love, they could only bring each other. Don Joe the Grocer, who brought his whole deli counter. The wise old people who wisely brought a table and chairs and a box full of dominoes so they could finish a game they started 100 years ago when they were young in Puerto Rico and a few neighbors for the tri-state area. They brought things too. So this is all the people getting together, meeting in the street with all of their possessions. Now I really did have a cousin Carmen the Beautiful. She was like J-Lo Beautiful. And she used to bring hair rollers to the beach so she could put hair colors in her hair so they would be dry so she'd look fine when she got back to the block. So I had to put her in the book. And I did have a Marta the Smart. She was really uh, well read. She had really thick glasses like that. We loaded our trucks and cars and trailers and off we went. We never took the highway. Bobby said old roads were better to break down on. And there's the caravan of all the people. Okay. Which we did. 
I knew we were gonna break down, said my big sister Shorty, the fortune teller. Of course, she rolled her eyes like that when she said it. That's okay, said my mommy. We can have a snack, and it gives me a chance to crochet a nice cloth for the picnic table. And it gives me a chance to rotate the tires after I fix the car, said Bobby cleverly. And I can fix my hair a bit, said Carmen the Beautiful. And I'll have time to finish reading this grim fairy tale, said Martha the Smart. I was just getting to the good part. And I'll be able to make some sandwiches to have before, during, and after we get to the lake, said Don Joe the Grocer. This family really looks on the bright side of things, right? My Aunt Duda the happily married and her brand new husband, Juan, gazed into each other's eyes and said, Oh boy, this gives us a chance to spend some time together before we get to the lake to spend more time together. The wise old people didn't say anything, but looked around wisely, set up their table their, and chairs, and broke out the dominoes. Anybody who wasn't changing a tire looking for a carjack or crawling under the car got busy preparing a snack for someone who was doing that kind of stuff. Anybody left over got a chance to do whatever they wanted to do, and I played tug of war with Alexi Gente. He's the dog, remember? And he's very good at that. So here's the family kind of, you know, doing their little chores and their little their Carmen putting on her makeup and mommy's knitting a tablecloth and Bucky's changing the tires. And Iris is playing tug of war with Alexi Gente with the map. So I knew exactly where the road map was when my papi wanted to check it out so we wouldn't get lost. But once we were on the road, we got lost anyway. I knew we were gonna get lost. Guess who says that? My big sister Shorty, rolling her eyes. Think of it as an adventure, says mommy. Besides, it gives us a chance to visit other neighborhoods and practice our English when we ask for directions. Now this is kind of a little joke that the illustrator put in. The illustrator is the man or woman who makes the pictures, remember? And that is O-O-P-S. And that says, oops, oops. One day we actually got there. It's a miracle, said my big sister, Shorty the fortune teller. <gasps> because they're so happy, look how Iris is like thrilled. I couldn't wait to do all the things I'd been thinking of, like jumping in the enchanted lake and getting some enchanted sun and eating some enchanted lunch and taking an enchanted nap and building some enchanted sandcastles. And that's when my big sister's eyes stopped rolling around long enough to read the enchanted sign that said, no dogs allowed. Enchanted or otherwise. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. She was hopping mad. I knew this was gonna happen. I gulped, my sister was right. Alexi Hente did cause trouble. This was terrible. What were we gonna do? Go home after breaking down and getting lost because Alexi Hente was a dog? He couldn't help it. He was born that way. And I came up with that line before Lady Gaga. Besides, being a dog was what he did best. Why weren't dogs allowed at the lake anyway? My mommy and papi looked at each other. Everyone started talking at once in English and in Spanish. Then papi said, wait a minute. Can you all be quiet so we can figure out what to do? We'll never figure out what to do, said my sister, rolling her eyes. But everyone was too busy trying to figure out what to do to hear her. Then my papi yelled, Gallense. Everybody say that. Gallense. Good job. And that means you didn't guess. Quiet in Spanish. And there's the picture of all this going on. There's the sign. There's the sister. There's everybody in line. Oh no, this was just terrible. What a total drag. And then he thought for the longest minute of my life. Finally, he said cleverly, look, these packages are heavy. We might as well put them on a nice picnic table until we figure out what to do. And then my mommy, the busy, got busy saying, it's hot. I 
might as well mix some coconut pineapple punch and set it out on the blankets in a nice shady spot until we figure out what to do. And Carmen the Beautiful said, I might as well put on my swimsuit in case Prince Charming shows up until we figure out what to do. See, and here's the parking lot that says, can't, the dog can't pass that parking lot. Can't go into the park. From the parking lot, there's the gorgeous cousin, Don Joe. Where do you think gonna happen? And Marta, the smart set, I might as well go make some fairy tale sand castles until we figure out what to do. And Don Joe, the grocer, said, we might as well eat those sandwiches I made until we figure out what to do. Seems like they're having fun while they figure out what to do, right? My aunt Tuta, the happily married, and her brand new husband Juan had decided to put their heads together and take a walk around the lake to try to figure out what to do. And the wise old people had already wisely sized up the situation, found the perfect tree to play dominoes under until somebody else figured out what to do. Then Bobby the Clever said, we should take turns staying with El Exigente in the parking lot until we figure out what to do. Clever Bobby. The dog seems oblivious to all the way around. Okay, here we go. So that day in the parking lot of the Enchanted State Park, my dog had his fur done by Carmen, was read to by Marta, was fed by Don Joe, was babysat by Aunt Tuta and her husband Juan played dominoes with the wise old people, had his paw read by my sister, and was hugged and kissed by me until we could figure out what to do. And my favorite one is always the dog playing dominoes. And I like these three guys. You know, I never mentioned three singing guys, but the illustrator put that in, and I like when they add stuff like that that I didn't think of. I like the dancing too. And before we knew it, it was dark. My cousin Marta the Smart couldn't read anymore. And Tuta and her brand new husband Juan were anxious to get home to start becoming an old, happily married couple. Carmen the Beautiful had put rollers back in her hair. Plus, there was nothing left to eat. It was time to leave. Is that beautiful? I think this is probably my favorite one my favorite illustration. And as we drove home, Alexi Hante and I agreed that my sister Shorty the fortune teller was right both times. Alexi Hante did cause trouble and we never did figure out what to do. But it didn't matter because we both felt tired and sleepy and happy and sandy, just like you should feel after you spend the day at the Enchanted State the end. I hope you liked that story as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. 